Section three, all about emergencies. We're going to talk about contingency procedures, fires, lost links, flyaways. What do you do when you report an accident? So if you have to report an accident. So these are things that there are requirements that the FAA has that you must do in certain situations. We need to know that. They will test you on this. They want to make sure that you are reporting the proper things, you know, and not reporting things that you don't need to. Um, and we also have a lot of practical tips in terms of what can you do to, you know, avoid emergency situations uh, and, you know, sort of, I don't know, sort of expect them to happen and uh, avoid the risk, you know, plan things out, um, just be a responsible pilot, right? Okay, so section three ones, contingency procedures, always have a backup plan. <clears throat> always know um, the options of, of, you know, what might happen, you know, kind of think about these emergency situations. They, they will probably happen at some point if you fly long enough. And uh, you need to, you know, experience will help you. Uh, but if you don't have the experience and you're new to this, like kind of thinking through things ahead of time and evaluating scenarios in your head will get you to that experience level even faster. So that's the idea. And the, and the faster you're at that experience level, the, the more you're reducing risk and you're not, uh, you know, not opening yourself up to, to any uh, penalties or anything and, you know, keeping people safe on the ground as well. So. So what are we so what are we talking about here? So, you know, reduce risk, obviously. You know, what's your what's your plan B? Right? You have your plan A, you know what you're trying to do, but what's your plan B? What's your plan C? If plan B doesn't work, uh, the FAA wants to see that you've thought through everything prior to the flight, and they may ask you if something happens, like, okay, what was your what was your contingency plan? What were you gonna do? Like, did you did you plan about plan this out? Did you think about this before you started flying? Like you, you should have, right? They expect you to do this, you know. You, know, you don't need to write it down or, you know, if you're flying by yourself or communicate it, but, you know, you might communicate it to your visual observer and say, hey, just so you know, um, uh, this is what I'm going to do if I, if I get into trouble. So one of the big things that the FAA wants and I think is prudent to do is to know where your airspace is. We're going to talk about airspace in Section 5 and go over that and learn how to read it on a map and figure out where you are, but know where that airspace is, know where... If you're near an airport, you may be just outside of it, the area where you can fly. But no, you know, if your drone starts to head that way and you, you lose the link and it's just going and, you know, you need to know that that matters if the drone is out of control heading towards an airport. If it's out of control heading the other way, not as not as important, not as dangerous, but still you got to think about, OK, what's it going to land on? Um, but if it's heading towards an airport, a whole nother story. Right. So. Uh, understand where your airspace is, which direction, um, you know, got your, your Google Maps, and you, you should be able to figure this out. We'll, we'll teach you some of this stuff. Um, know if there are spectators around or dogs or kids, right? If you're out in an open field that, um, you know, you get there and it's empty when you fly there, but all of a sudden a car pulls up, guy opens his hatchback, and out comes a, a beautiful golden retriever who just wants to make friends with you. And he just wants to get a good sniff on your drone um, and those spinning blades. Um, <laughs> you know, you got a problem, right? And if the dog comes running up across the field and you're low on a battery and you got to get that thing down um, or if it's going to it's gonna land automatically and the dog is, you know, just barking at it or, you know, ready to ready to figure out what it is um, or, or bothering you or whatever, like you got to you got to think about it. How are you going to deal with that? And, um, you know and plan it out, right? Either grab the dog first or um, hand catch the drone um, if, you're, if you're comfortable with that, right? So, um, you know, think about it. Um, you know, think about what if there are kids around running around like a, a group of toddlers shows up in a daycare trip <laughs> or something, right? Or you're at the beach and there's lots of people around and they're, you know, <clears throat> all over the place and you know, um, that's tricky, right? Like, you know, you got to think about who's around and, you know, the, the people that could get hurt and where they're at and that, how that can change over the course of your half hour flight, like very easily. Right. So, um, have your phone numbers ready of nearby airports. If you're like, yeah, I'm flying right at the edge of an airport. I'm going to write that down, put it in a note into my phone and be able to call them very quickly and say, hey, my I lost control of my drone. It's heading towards your airport. 
if there's any Cessnas coming down in the next five minutes, you know, you might want to tell them to, uh, to hold up, right? Um, stuff like that, right? Um, flight termination, plan on where you're going to dump your drone if you have to, right? This is, um, you know, in an emergency, the drone, uh, you know, a, a, you got a bad prop or a motor dies or uh, all of a sudden your battery gets low and you're not going to make it back to where you thought you were going to or uh, you see a hawk bearing down on your drone, um, helicopter comes out over the horizon, right? You know, th things happen like very quickly sometimes, um, you know, and you're going to, you're going to bail the drone. Like, like, where are you going to, where are you going to crash it, right? Where are you going to crash land this thing? Um, think about that, right? So, you know, I think for me, my, my choices and, and, and this is what I would kind of look around at and, and see is like some sort of a low shrub is perfect. You, you're going to crash it. It's probably not going to do any damage. Kind of be soft. It, it'll it'll catch it and grab it, and you can go get it. Uh, or a low tree, and then you know a higher up tree. Even if it's a large tree, you know maybe you can get it down um, later, right? If it gets stuck up there, it might it might fall down, but at least it's going to kind of reduce the impact. Um, after that, you would want to crash it in you know tall grass, and then after that, <clears throat> low grass, and then after that, maybe just dirt. Um, and then, you know, you could put it on onto pavement, right? A dirt road or a, a paved road or, you know, prefer, preferably an empty parking lot, right? Where there's, you know, not going to hit a car, do damage and have to pay for all that. Um, and then even a water body, right? If you're at the beach and your drone's out of control and there's people around and you, you, you can't land it safely, uh, but you can get it into the water because it's a much bigger target, uh, do that. It's going to be worth it. You know, yeah, you're going to probably hurting someone is going to cost you a heck of a lot more. And it's, you know, an ethical thing to do, uh, not hurt anybody or put anyone at risk. So um, that's kind of my thought process. So I'll look around and, and, and note these things. I almost kind of do it automatically now. Just, you know, not that it's ever happened, but, um, you know, I, I heard enough stories to know that it it, it could happen and I, and I need to need to do the right thing, right? So, um, and you know, if you have a flyaway, you might want to call air traffic control. Like I said, if it's heading towards the airport or away from the airport, um, have that number ready. All right, next up, section three, two, I'm going to talk about fires.